The Fantasy Six-Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And A.J. Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, my co-host, AJ Abergarth. What's up, man? Uh, not too much, not too much. What's happening? Uh, you know, getting some football, uh, hoping baseball comes back soon enough. Uh, and, you know, for those of you watching on, on YouTube, you know, you're probably noticing a, a new layout here. We've, uh, we're testing some things out, trying to get our guests on video, and we'll have a couple tonight that uh, hopefully this, this works. I've, I've been having issues with it all night, so <laughs> hopefully this doesn't just die on me. But uh, I'm <clears throat> just hope, hopeful thinking here that it's, it's just going to work, man. Um, so yeah, I guess news and notes that we've got for the show. Um, MLB still no deal. Uh, players and owners, man, I don't know. I, they don't really seem like they're all that close. This this latest deal is at least they're doing prorated salaries back to the players. So there's a plus, but I don't know, man. Like they don't really seem all that interested on either side. <laughs> No, not really. And it's a shame. I mean, the other sports seem like they're getting it together and wanting to actually play. And I think that baseball players want to play, but they're just being greedy both sides. And it's it's not a good look for for baseball, which has already had its own uh, fair share of not good looks. So yeah, absolutely. Um in football news, which is what we're jumping into today, we're starting our our fantasy football preseason shows. Um, Dalvin Cook holding out. Uh, it seems kind of like a little weak of a holdout, in my opinion. Like it, it would kind of hurt him. He would he would be he would be a restricted free agent instead of an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year if he held out. Um, and he's already lowered his terms after like what three days. Uh, he was asking for fifteen. Now he's like, well, you know, I, I would accept thirteen. Yeah. Okay. You sound like you're okay. Really I don't need the do extra this. two mil a year. I think I can. I think I can have you know one less beach house. <laughs> I don't know. Greed again, <laughs> conquers all. Yeah. It, it seems it seems pretty interesting, but I don't know what does this do for Dalvin Cook's value. I mean, we saw it last year with Mel Gordon, right? I mean, he was what number four, number five being picked in most drafts. I mean, are you taking him that high still at this point? I still think that he's a, a first rounder, um, so it's hard to to try to bypass that. But I don't know if I'm going to take him that early. I, I feel like I'd rather have some of these other guys that are on teams that are actually under contract and playing and ready to play. Um, you know, if not, you know, maybe it's uh Mike Mike Boone's season. Mike S Z N as as the Boone. kids these days Mike say. Madison, where have you been? I know, but it's it's an Alexander Madison injury away from being uh, Mike Boone S Z N. Okay, all right, come on, all right, all right, whatever, man. Yeah, I don't know what Still I would do Boone. with Cook if I was forced to draft today. Like you know, <clears throat> probably wouldn't take him fourth or fifth. I'd probably drop him to the back end of the first round. Um, but I do think ultimately he'll sign and it'll be fine. It's just it's hard to take that risk that early in in the first round. I yeah. think. But um, <clears throat> uh, before we get started, I want to remind everybody, f- you know, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Anchor, iTunes, wherever it is that you listen. We appreciate it from everywhere and it helps us out. Um, so go ahead and click those buttons, guys. Um, <clears throat> before we bring on our guest, let's do our beer of the week. Mm, beer. All right, AJ, what you got? Uh, tonight I am indulging, uh, well, starting the show with Stone's Soaring Dragon Imperial IPA. Uh, it's an Imperial India Pale Ale uh, with some white tea, which is interesting because I'm not really a tea person, but I like this kind of tea. So All right. uh, it's an eight percenter, pretty solid beer. Um, had one of my last few of these yesterday and decided I'd crack into one tonight. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, I've been saving a bunch of these, like, four packs that I bought. I've been saving 
saving one last one of the of the pack so i'm gonna have like six weeks in a row here where i've definitely got a new new 60 announcer here um this one is commonwealth brewing company intergalactic it's a double ipa um galaxy comet in hellerbertel blanc i don't know what the hell that means uh hops i never <laughs> heard of it not gonna lie uh 8.7 it's a good solid beer man it's got a little fruity notes to it but it's also uh you know, it's that double, it's a, it's that double IPA kind of like heaviness to it too. But it, so it's a good combination in my opinion. I gave it a four and a half on Untaps. So, mm. cheers. Excellent. Um, Solid score. Yes, it is. So, all right, um, let's jump right into it. Our guest of the week, or well, our first guest of the week, I should say. I'm not used to having two. Is uh, Donkey Teeth from Razball. Um, what's up, man? What's, What's happening, guys? guys? It is great to be on the uh, the six pack with you. I didn't know you were gonna have two guests, though. I don't know. I feel, <laughs> I feel <laughs> like uh, at least I'm first. Yeah, exactly. 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 We'd, We'd like to share, share the wealth here and uh, enjoy as many people within the fantasy community as we can. So, yeah. So uh, welcome aboard. aboard. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, happy to have you here. Uh, we wanted to talk with you, and I'm as I'm talking about the the new format i'm having to move your video because it did, didn't work <laughs> so there we go technical difficulties it's all good you worked uh now Trial and error. yeah uh I'll, I'll get this one day i swear um i'm sure i will have to do it with gary later in the show it will screw up in- inevitably uh but yeah so what we wanted to bring you on for was to talk about ras bowl 2020 um i know i was part of ras bowl last year aj were you part of it yes yeah. Uh, I did terrible. Was indeed. <laughs> did, did not, not fare very well. well. I did but awful. I was there. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got stuck in, um, oh, what's his name? Scott Barrett's division and got slaughtered. Everybody got <laughs> slaughtered by Scott in that division. Uh, so it is, it is what it is. Uh, it was also like my first year ever playing best ball. So that wasn't a very good introduction to it. Um, but I do like the format. Uh, but go ahead and like let the listeners know like what is what is Raz Bowl? Oh man, it's, I'm, I'm I'm getting better at explaining it because it is kind of pure madness, and uh, I feel like kind of an idiot when I when I go through all the intricacies because it just keeps going and going. But you mentioned that it's best ball. Um, it's actually technically better ball, and the difference between best ball and better ball, we give you ten dollars fab for call it the entire season it's actually only the first nine weeks it's the regular season so you get ten dollars fab minimum one dollar bids uh the point of the fab is just to allow you to cycle out your dead roster spots uh it's it's kind of an optional thing you know all the industry it's an industry league we have fan participation it's three to one industry industry to fan ratio so uh, last year we had 180 participants, 140 industry guys, 40 fans from the fan lottery. Uh, you can win your way in through some leagues that we run, uh, and some other ways. But the Fab, you have no zero dollar bid, so maximum of 10 moves for the whole season. Um, the Fab runs every week until the ninth week. There's 12 team leagues, and after week nine, the playoffs start. So the top six from each league make the cut. The bottom six are eliminated, and they're they're out of it. They're done, so you don't have to worry about it anymore, which is nice for, for us industry guys that are playing in way too many leagues. Um, and then the top three from each league go to the championship bracket. The, the next three from each league go to a consolation bracket. And from there, there's uh, what's called a cut line, and we have the – The kind folks at the National Fantasy Football Championship host this event, and it's formatted after their cut line championship format. And this is where it gets really kind of crazy because there's a cut line after each week, after week nine, and a certain amount of teams advance in the championship bracket. Uh, A couple of teams will move up from the consolation bracket into the championship bracket, and then the teams that didn't make the cut from the championship bracket will move down to the consolation bracket and a bunch of the consolation guys get kicked out. And it just keeps going like this. Uh, and you actually start setting your lineup after week nine. So it's best ball for the first nine weeks. Then if you make the playoffs and aren't cut, 
then you start setting a lineup and there's no more fab. So as I said, I feel like an idiot explaining this because there's just so much there's to it lot. and it just sounds way too complicated. But uh, once you do it, it's not it's not as complicated as it sounds. Yeah, I mean, I'm you know I remember being in it last year and you know obviously the best ball is the the biggest. I think probably one of the you know the biggest thing of of it there like the, you've got to draft for best ball first um, and then. But it's not like you said, it's not true best ball because you do get waivers right during the season, at least. So like that, that was a huge difference, too. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I was just I just had a really bad team. So, no, oh well, <laughs> um, yeah, best ball is uh, it's gaining steam. Definitely. I've, I've been a best ball player for. A couple of years, you know, the the MFL leagues were really kind of where the, the MFL 10s, which are now the best ball 10s, and actually the the guys at uh, the National Fantasy Football Championship, they're becoming like a conglomerate and they own that now. So uh, it's gaining steam. It is a different game. Um, you need to think about, uh, since typically in best ball you don't get those moves in season you really need to think about having your bye weeks covered right. um you need to do that in ras bowl as well because some of those bye weeks happen in the playoffs where there's no moves allowed as well and then you've yeah. got this other wrinkle of figuring out if you want to spend your minimal fab your ten dollars on like one player early or save it to maybe fill those holes that have because everybody's going to have injuries so there's a lot of wrinkles to it and i don't think anybody um really knows what they're doing with this format uh, we're in year two so maybe people have somewhat figured it out but last year mike beers from roto rotoviz ended up winning the championship he didn't use any of his fab he forgot about it <laughs> he remembered like week nine after it was over but it, it all comes down to who you draft and he took uh well you guys talked about the the dalvin holdout he had dalvin on his team um he drafted McCaffrey, so McCaffrey, Dalvin in the second round, and then he had Derrick Henry. So it's like good oh, luck man. beating that three-headed monster, right? Yeah, yeah. There's there's no chance on that one. I I I'm trying to remember who my team was. I know I had some decent players, but I, I think I was drafting a little bit later in the first. So I tried to you know revamp my strategy a little bit, but. I don't even think I made it past the first the first matchup, or if I did, it, I definitely lost in the second matchup. So it was an early exit, unfortunately, but uh, it was fun. I, I'm uh, definitely looking forward to it again and seeing if I can my better my positioning uh, this time around. And um, you know, get now that I'm a little more familiar with with best ball in general, I definitely use some of my fab and uh, tried to like gauge. Well, I know a lot of people might be going after this player or this player. Is it two dollars? Is it four dollars? Because yeah, it's 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 definitely a uh, a new strategy with only ten dollars to spend. So it was fun. But um, the other thing I'll say is I wrote a an article, a weekly fab article for those first nine weeks last year, and it's a twenty round draft. Um, no defenses and kickers, so it's a pretty deep league, twelve team leagues. There's not a whole lot left out on the the waivers. I mean, I think the two big pickups in most leagues. DJ Chark was available mm. in almost all leagues. Mm. And uh, Mostert was like the biggest running back. So running back was pretty barren on the wire. Everybody yeah. got the handcuffs I think, early. And you have to in best ball. I mean, so. Yeah. Uh, I had a, at least one or two handcuffs. And then I think I basically was just going after injury guys. That was about it. So, so our, Excellent. Excellent. So are, are you, um, um, sorry. So uh, yeah, I was going to jump into the question here, AJ. Um, so last year, I don't remember like how many how many uh, teams were in it. Um, so like, remind us how many teams were in it, and then are you increasing, expecting to in that increase this year? Yeah, it should definitely increase. I mean, we we kind of recruited pretty hard last year, and uh, this year we're not really going to do any recruiting. You know, the word is is kind of out. I mean, uh, we'll we'll come on uh, and do some promotion with guys like you. This is awesome that that we're spreading the word here. But I think just kind of word of mouth. We threw it together really quick last year, also. Um, so I think word of mouth, it's it's just going to grow. It pretty much anybody in the industry is is welcome. You know, I know some people don't make it into the Scott Fishbowl because it's just absolutely massive at this point. <laughs> yeah. So 
we'll get we'll get some overflow from there. Uh, but we had a lot of lot of the big names. We threw it together in like a week last year, and I couldn't believe the the amount of support that we got from a lot of the big guys in the industry, the Yahoo guys, Andy Barons and Brad Evans, uh, the athletic guys. We had Michael Salfino, um, Derek Van Riper, the CBS guys. I mean, it was awesome, and and the, you know. Little guys like us that you know, that haven't uh, haven't made a huge name in the industry yet. I, I know you guys are doing well with your <laughs> your uh, ranking contest, which is very cool. Top five finish. Yes. I, I'm impressed by that, guys. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, it's it's fun to get a shot, and that's why everybody loves the Scott Fishbowl. To right. those guys that you've been following since you know you were playing fantasy football in grade school. And now you're you're actually getting a chance to play it at Andy Barron's in his league, possibly. Yeah, absolutely. It's fun. So yeah, last year we had 180, and I I expect that to to probably be 250, 300 would just be my blind guess. Cool, cool, awesome. So we already kind of talked about the playoffs and you know how how many uh, you know how many weeks you have until that, but how many how many teams is it that actually advance to it? Uh, you may have gone through that already, and I might have. Yeah, and, and I kind of threw. I flew through it. Yeah, so it's uh, and it's something that I forget too. So half half of the league will be eliminated after week nine, and okay, twenty. So six from each league will be eliminated. The top three from each league will move to the championship bracket. The next three from each league go to the consolation bracket, and you can work your way up, but it's against the odds. You can work your way up from the consolation to the championship. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Yeah, I'm trying. Still... My my window will not come back yeah, up. No, All okay. right. So what are the um? Uh, are there any special scoring yeah, ahead, settings? You know, like you know, Scott. You mentioned Scott Fishball, right? Like, so Scott Fish does like the super flex, and he does like the tight end premium stuff like that. And he adds in. I think this year he's on quarterback sacks. We'll get into that in the second half of the show. Uh, that's what we're talking about. But um, what uh, what what do you do differently, or do you not? So, well, yeah, not so much. I mean, ours is pretty standard. Um, you know, we made some tweaks to their cut line format, but we we kind of wanted to stick to the basics there. You know, we're piggybacking off of the Scott Fishbowl, but we don't want to take, uh, you know, everything from, right. from Scott's no, thing. It. It's awesome that he... What's that? No, I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, and uh, we kind of want a little bit more... I like having this um, ability to create content off of it that's applicable to your standard league, you know. And I, I love the the way Scott Fishbowl is run and how it's totally different. But what happens in the Scott Fishbowl draft isn't necessarily going to help out the guy that's uh, reading our article about it. You know, it may be entertaining and and especially fun if they get into it to play against us, but tight end premium there's not most leagues aren't, aren't doing tight end premium so yeah it's going to be pretty standard scoring it's full point ppr six point uh passing touchdowns um we did make it a little bit deeper it's uh three wide receiver two flex two running backs uh it's not super flex it's one quarterback and uh you know pretty deep bench uh I, i'd say that's about it did i say two flex yeah, yeah two flex did. and we got rid of the kicker and defense because yeah. you know screw those <laughs> yeah 100 percent agree <laughs> I, i'm trying i'm pushing i'm pushing hard in my league that i run it's it's basically like my home league that i've got a bunch of couple still stragglers from back when i ran it started it in college um but mostly you know guys from from my hometown now uh and they just won't do it they they're they're traditionalists they want the kicker they want the defense it's like come on guys just no one's doing this anymore get with no, the, i feel get like we all times. have one of those leagues yes, we all have I've one got, i've got yeah. two that i can't get rid of them <laughs> and this is like oh just, come on this is not necessary anymore <laughs> but it's whatever i mean i'd be I okay with it. it yeah you know maybe maybe one year it's like just okay just let's just get rid of one of them <laughs> yeah right we'll get rid of kickers at least come on <laughs> yeah we'll figure it out one of these days so all right um sorry my screen just went down so i guess the last question we had here for you is just um you know do you have any changes to to Raz Bowl this year or are you just sticking with what what worked last year yeah we're sticking with it 
I'm hearing an echo. Am I good? Uh, yeah. I'm not. Sure. I, so our next guest just jumped on the call. It, was, it could it be. It could be something going on there. I gotta mess with it. Again, you know, this is me trying something new that I didn't apparently test it out very <laughs> well. So that's pretty awesome. Should probably have. That's all good, guys. But we're uh, yeah, we're keeping the same format. So expand in the field. If you guys are interested in in getting in, there will be a, a fan lottery. Um. Uh, you know, there's going to be ways on the Razball site to increase your odds. So if you come over and, you know, take a look at our, our rankings and some of the content we're pumping out there, um, it'll it'll increase your odds in the fan lottery. And we'll also have leagues that we run through Razball and uh, the winners of those secure a spot for next year. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it, you know, it's pretty much the, the same as last year's format. All right, cool deal. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, man. Well, um, <clears throat> I think that's it we got for Res Bowl. Uh, hopefully, I, I get the invite this year. And I think you said earlier I have it. I just – maybe it's locked in my email box somewhere. Um, so I got to go find it and, and make sure I accept because I, I definitely want to redeem myself for the poor showing I had last year. <laughs> yes, me too. So. Great. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are in, and I definitely sent them out. So Good stuff, good stuff. Figure out where they went. Let me know if you can't find it. All right, sounds good, man. Uh, we've got your info down at the bottom, but uh, go ahead and remind everybody where they can find you, man. Yeah, like I said, over at uh, Razball, I'm putting out my redraft rankings. i got dynasty rankings out there already. Um, we got a lot of great content over there. I've got the uh, Razball Fantasy Football Podcast I'm on and uh, Fantasy Football Malpractice YouTube show. So uh, I may be reaching out to you, Joe, for uh, a little advice. If, if you ever perfect this uh, system here. <laughs> Working I'm, on it. I don't know. This, <laughs> this, is, this is pretty bad, today, unfortunately. Uh, the trick I know is not working. So whatever. We'll figure it out. So, All right. Um, we got to bounce over to, uh, to our next guest. But uh, great having you on, man. We will uh, do it again soon. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Right, Absolutely. You. Thanks, man. Talk to you soon. All right, so yeah, your your video just totally went haywire, so I have no idea what's going on. So <laughs> there, well, no, I, nope, I have no idea. <laughs> this is gonna be comical to watch, actually. Um, this, this is gonna be a good yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, hey, the content's good, but apparently, do not watch the video this week. So this is trial and error at <laughs> its finest. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's jump right into our next guest and hope that his his video is working. Uh, Gary Haddow. <laughs> Yeah, it's working. Um, well, <laughs> I see the I see the default <laughs> I Skype think thing. Are you on video? Yeah, I just unmuted it. Can you hear I me? Can hear you. It doesn't look like you're actually on video though. You need to you need to activate your 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 video screen. But uh, that's crazy. I can see you guys, and I can see myself. Oh, that's awesome. I'll be. I'm. I think I'm back in. I have to unblur my background yet again. What happened to you? Oh my gosh, Skype. I don't know. Gross. <laughs> Grossness with Skype. This is why I didn't want to use it, but you know, it's the only option I've got. Unfortunately, I. I can reload if you guys want. Yeah, I might need you to. Um, <laughs> if, if, <laughs> or we can just go with uh, just audio, no problem. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what's going on, but uh, we'll we'll have to figure this out. AJ's missing too, so this is a good time. I. Yeah, or, yeah I, I see Gary. I see your video. Um, I, I can see all three of you. Maybe it's me. I don't. I, did I freeze? I think it's you, Joe. Oh, oh. Lord. Oh, I did. I froze. <laughs> Sweet. Yep. <laughs> Not good for the host to freeze on Skype. Technical difficulties. Uh, all right. Um, great. Great. So I'm just gonna pause the recording and we're gonna come back. <laughs> I don't know how to. Act. Literally no idea. All right, so we're back. Uh, I, luckily, we're not doing this live, but uh, you're going to see a little kind of glitch in the video if you're watching on YouTube. But uh, finally, we're going to welcome Gary Haddow from uh, Fighting Chance <laughs> Fantasy, the uh, 2019 winner of Scott Fishbowl. Uh, I'm guessing you already got your invite to Scott Fishbowl X. Um, I did. I, it came a little bit later than I expected. <laughs> yeah, dude, I got mine Monday, man. He made me sweat for it this year. I've been in since 480, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was I was sweating. Uh, unfortunately, only two other people from my staff have gotten on it. Um, <clears throat> John Lepresso, who's been a finalist twice, and then actually uh, um, another guy. He, he 
but I think he got affiliated with a different site. Uh, he writes for um, Sleeper and, and does some stuff for them. So I think he got affiliated with them and got looped, lumped in with that group, but he just happens to write for us. But uh, I'm hoping a bunch of the guys, like AJ was in it last year. I'm hoping they all get in. Um, <clears throat> but oh, we got to ask you, man. We got to ask you about last year, right? Uh, it's just inevitable, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, for, first things first, you know, what – what was your strategy going into the draft? Oh man, uh, I definitely I felt like people got really hopped up on the tight end premium, and that was one of my first things was I was going to fade tight end. Uh, I was looking at my draft just earlier this week. I actually didn't take my first tight end until round fifteen, but then fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, I took tight ends, and only one of them hit. Uh, and that was Darren Waller in the 17th. Oh, so, <laughs> can't complain. It was pretty that damn good value. Well. But uh, mm-hmm. I think I took Cameron Bray, um, Jer- uh, God, Jimmy Graham. And then I took Ian Thomas and dumped him the week before oh. Greg Olson ended up <laughs> going out. To be fair, so I don't sucked, think Thomas but... had, a, he had like one, maybe two good weeks. But yeah, that's still pretty brutal. Ultimately, like it didn't make a difference. No, right? no, of course not. Of <laughs> yeah. course not. Actually, you know what, dude? I forgot. I forgot something. I know um, you obviously. Uh, you, you've told me you're, we've had conversations while I was trying to get everything working again. I think I figured it out. I really have no idea. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, let us know what you're drinking tonight, man. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> Sierra Nevada uh, Triple IPA Hopt- nice. uh, Optimum. It's good. Nice, strong percentage. Hadn't had it in a while. My wife and I are huge Sierra Nevada fans. She went to college at Chico where Sierra Nevada is brewed. Oh, good stuff. So man. it's actually awesome. my entire family went to school there except for me. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. I, I think I think Sierra opened a plant down in uh, North Carolina, too. Or not they plant, did. but like a brewery. Yeah. Asheville, maybe? Or I think Rome so. City. It's a town I need to visit. All right, so there's a lot of beer towns. You should come to Austin, huge beer town. That's where I'm at. Do uh, do you remember? Yes, absolutely. Do you remember what uh, draft slot you had, by any chance? Yeah, the third. The third. Okay. So I mean, I, I can tell you most of my draft, but yeah, from the third spot, uh, you know, there's a lot of all mock drafts. Your first time in Scott Fish, I highly recommend do the mock drafts that people are doing. Test out all sorts of stuff from your your draft spot. There's DM groups on Twitter where you know all the third spots are all talking and we right. kind of all came to a consensus if, if McCaffrey was going to be there we would all take him and luckily he was there and nice. record breaking seasons are a good thing to have yeah that that's that's going to work out pretty well um yeah so of of your draft picks then who was your favorite pick and by that, I, I mean, not necessarily like your top score, top pick, uh, which yeah. obviously was McCaffrey, but like your your biggest surprise value pick. Um, so I remember Waller at 17. So he, he was a good value. Uh, I got I took Ryan Tannehill at the very back in round 20, just thinking that Mariota is probably going to get hurt. Ironically, I feel like Mar- Mar- Mariota has that kind of similar value, not because Carr is going to get hurt, but because Carr could suck. Um, and that's a potentially good offense there in Las Vegas. Um, my favorite guy going into the season in all of my leagues, kind of my plant my flag guy, excuse me, was Aaron Jones. And he, he, he was in the first five rounds, I was hoping to get – in the first three rounds, sorry, I was hoping to get a combination of CMC, uh, Michael Thomas, Evans, Devonta Freeman, and Aaron Jones. I got all five of them in five, in my first five picks instead of my first oh, three gosh. rounds. And so having CMC and Michael Thomas, obviously they broke records. So that's amazing. But Aaron Jones getting him in the fifth and he ended up as in thinking this scoring, he was just behind Dalvin cook as the third running back. And so he's my guy. I mean, even my Kevin Tompkins sent me a, uh, Aaron Jones Jersey after the win. I do have an Aaron Jones Jersey in my closet right now. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty awesome, dude. Solid. Solid. <laughs> That's an amazing draft. Yeah. Um, yeah huge. Huge year. <laughs> yeah, it worked out pretty well. And took a chance on Jameis. Uh, after those guys, I got Allen and then Jameis in the six and seven. So I intentionally knew I was going to wait on quarterback. It's just kind of always going to be my strategy. We'll see if I do it this year because the scoring is a lot different. But 
I wanted to wait, and even though I took two turnover-prone guys, I was able to, you know, get Winston, who threw for over 5,000, plus his 30 interceptions. <laughs> um, fun fact, in the championship, Winston got me 7.1 points, despite the fact that he was killing it the rest of the season, because that was the Texans game where he threw for four, maybe, I think he threw for four pick six, uh, four interceptions, and one was a pick six. So... <laughs> Going uh, that that was 18 points that I was missing just from the interceptions and the pick six. He knows all about Winston's week 16 because uh, <laughs> I, I had him in the finals going against AJ in our in our fantasy six pack league and uh, he had so mad. oh who was your quarterback? He fucking went all uh, Tannehill by the beard. Oh yeah. no, you fits Patrick. Yeah, because you had went absolutely bonkers, and I was like, you're gonna smash me. I had like 11 points from Winston in that week in that league and. Uh, it was bad, man. I was like, oh, man. But thankfully, I also had Gusecki, who Fitzpatrick threw all his touchdowns to. So it <laughs> totally bounced out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Gusecki had an amazing finish. Tannehill, you guys are referencing that. I mean, also, that game against the against the Saints, I just remember being like, oh, my gosh, the Saints are just going to run out the clock. And then the, Tannehill got the ball back. He thought he was going to drive. And then he threw a pick. And also, I'm a diehard Niners fan. So I wanted the Saints to lose. It, that was that was a roller coaster game. That just an entire week was insane. <laughs> yeah, dude, I saw your. Uh, I think you had like little like live videos of you like just going nuts, and I would be the same losing my shit. Dude. That was that was pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that that night. Um, in case you don't remember, it was uh, Packers Vikings Monday Night Football, last game of the season. I went into it being down forty points. For anybody that doesn't know the. Final is pretty much you versus 19 other right. people. So yep. it's whoever wins out of the top 20. And I remember turning the game off after the first quarter. Uh, and I was out to dinner with like my family and stuff. I was like, I'm just done. And I got home. I didn't even watch it because Aaron Jones was doing nothing for the whole first half. Happened to look at it. It was like, I'm, only, I'm down 24 points. But at that point, like he was kind of close to a 50 yard mark. And there's that five point bonus. And started watching it more. And then all of a sudden, I was like, this could happen. And I was calling my best friend. And sure enough, on that play, uh, right when I called him, uh, Aaron Jones caught a 46-yard touchdown. Oh, and it just that's when I started losing my shit. And it literally went down to, I think, probably the final like three or four plays of the game. And uh, Aaron Jones crossed another five, uh, another 50-yard mark. And so that bumped me the extra five points and was able to go in front of Tommy Garrett. I mean, Tommy Garrett's the man. Shocked that I was able to beat him and I mean overcome that deficit, but hey, it happens. Oh yeah, that oh, was, man, it's amazing, man. I've been to the conference finals every single year. One of these days, I'm getting in. <laughs> I'm getting to the big show uh, just to have a chance. But so we've talked about your draft. You know, you had an amazing draft, obviously. But did you pick up anybody that that really helped you along the way? Yeah, both of the guys I got were free. Um, I'm a really big proponent of as soon as waivers run, start checking who else was not picked up. All the free agents, because that's how you save money. I got Darius Slayton for free. Oh my I got uh, Jacob Hollister, which was kind of weird because of the tight end premium component. And, and he had one okay week. And I was like, oh, I'll just throw him on my bench, see what happens. And he ended up being a starter most weeks. I actually spent the most money on Jacoby Myers. Just thinking like, oh, he he's going to be the number two there. And he ended up doing absolutely nothing. Uh, my biggest savior was actually in the playoffs. I got Brashad Perriman for free because nobody else was bidding. It was so late and got Perryman. I had Evans. He went down. Godwin went down. And then I had Jameis Perryman stack for like three weeks when Perryman just like blew up. I mean, it got him a pretty damn good contract uh, with with the Jets this year. So. Those three, Hollister, Slayton, and, and Perriman, made a huge difference. And I should say in the final, Darius Slayton goose egged. I will always remember that. Oh, <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah. But it didn't matter because you still won. So Exactly. Lucked out. A lot of people shit the bed in the finals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like that happens. And, you know, even yeah. in standard leagues where, th- you know, your home leagues and stuff where you don't have as many uh, bonus uh, points yeah. and, and, you know, the tight end premiums and stuff so all right so the last question we have for for last year is how much beer did you actually drink out of the trophy 
The trophy was sweet, by the way. Um, the first video was a fail. <laughs> oh, no. So that was one. The second video. I'm going to get a story out of that. I did. And it's still just like, it's really hard to drink a beer fast out of that. And so the video just was very lackluster. I will tell you, I bought a ton of beer because, as I said, I'm a Niners fan and for the Super Bowl. And I remember afterward, after the Super Bowl ended, my wife kind of knocking on the door like, honey, like, do you still want to chug a beer out of the trophy like you were planning on it? And I was like, no, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> so only the two. But when I win again this year, I mean, I'm, wow. I'm going to have to figure out a way to hold two trophies and just oh like. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This, this, this fucking guy. <laughs> That was well. That was that was going to be our our last question of the next section for talking about SFBX. But beat us to it. Though. I'll just ask it now. Then I guess if you repeat as champion, which you say you're already going to, uh, will you drink more or less out of the new trophy between now and SFB eleven than you did over the past year? I will probably fill it with beer when if if I were to repeat. Uh, I would probably fill it with beer, not just with one. And I would probably from then on use it as my cup. And Your it would just be like, that's my drinking cup. Uh, in reality, I, I've said this many times, I could play 1,200 more times. Or now I have to say 1,440 because there's more participants. Right. I don't even know if I'll ever get to the finals again, let alone ever coming close to winning. I, I think the reality of anybody ever repeating, I mean, it's it's like, it's tough. Fantasy yeah, football lottery. It's totally tough. I, I just it would be so for I'm actually like how razor thin it is to even get to that yeah, point. I mean I look anybody who wins, obviously it's incredible. It's it's a you know, it's you definitely have to know what you're doing. Not to knock you down at all, but it is there is a lot of luck involved. I mean it's everything a lot of things, a lot of things have to go right, right? So there's that. I'm almost I'm almost as impressed with John Lepresto, who writes for Fantasy Six Pack, getting to the finals twice <laughs> yeah. in three years. <laughs> Granted, it was less people I, I, when he got in, but it is still impressive nonetheless, in my opinion. I have no idea how people do it repeated. I mean, you, you really have to know what you're doing and have just a draft where you're just so lucky. I, well, because people go The false crazy. bravado that comes from it and comes from all the videos is, is just that, like... Anybody that is posting stuff like Stompy too, I'm sure Stompy. I mean, I don't think Stompy in any way thinks he's any better at fantasy football than other people. Stuff just happened and it, and it fell that way. That being said, like I'm gonna ride the wave and do whatever the fuck I can. Oh, he, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> enjoy the right. shit out of it, control <laughs> the shit out of people. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Right. But I mean, like the one thing you, you said, like name. the dra- the mock drafts, right? Like you have to do mock drafts. You have to do mock drafts. The thing I will say about mock drafts is test your strategies. And as many of them as possible, right? If you're in yeah. it, you cannot use the mock drafts as an ADP because they're not going to have your yeah. draft will never go that way. Never. No. Um, people do what? Who was it? Eric Moody last year took like four tight ends. Four tight ends. Very beginning. Four straight tight we ends, like, I think. We were like, Might have been five. I, dude, it was I, nuts, I, man. He, I, I know for a fact that he went four straight, and it's just yeah. like. That, I mean, I get it. Also, like everyone talks about, you have to differentiate yourself, but like, that was a little do stuff within reason. Me, that was a- My biggest thing about mock drafts is do as much as you can the stuff that you want to do, but also take the liberty to draft shitty teams. I'm doing a mock right now, and I don't particularly like it because I'm going three wide receivers. I didn't take my first running back until the fifth round. And that's just not how I draft, but it's really useful for me to see, well, if I had swapped out this person here, this, this position here, I feel a lot better about my team. So I can start to feel comfortable so that when I'm on the, on the clock, it's very different. Absolutely. You know, I don't want to regret any picks right when I make that pick. I want to regret them later when they get injured. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I, that was my team last year. Uh, (laughs) first I drafted, well, I'm trying to think if I took Camara first, I had the four slot. So I got into one of the, you know, the chats with the, the, hey, we're all drafting four. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Same deal. If CMC is sitting mm-hmm. there, you take him. He wasn't. <laughs> so yeah. it's a Camaro. It's like, okay, I'm good with this. Uh, no. Uh, wait. No, I had Zeke. Yeah, I had Zeke. Never mind. But he was holding out. So it's like, 
Uh, yeah. Whatever. But I took Z, then I took Luck, and then I took Kittle. I believe, Luck. or it might have been Kid. It might have been Kittle Luck. Yeah. Well, yeah, your quarterbacks I, ruined you last year. There's nothing you could do. Yeah, about it. I had. And then I then I was sitting on Breeze later. I was like, oh, well, do I want Breeze or Big Ben? <laughs> Either one would have screwed ah, I like, you. I like one Breeze better. The other. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it didn't matter. <laughs> so let's, I was like already out of it by week yeah. two. So, so, let's, <laughs> like, God, so let's jump into this year, man. So um, I'll be honest. I haven't studied it completely yet. Uh, I do know that the one major scoring change is – the the negative one for quarterback sacks, um, <laughs> and, and and incompletions, and incompletions. Incompletions. Okay, so yeah. that I didn't. So, know. Incompletions, Holy and I cow. think uh, that, like it's point five. Or... It's point five per completion. It's negative one per incompletion. Oh. And the best way that it was phrased was on the commission podcast, uh, Commission Impossible, which is Scott and Ryan's pod, and they said. 67% to your break even. So if you're going to have a quarterback that you think is going to average below that, then you've got to start thinking about deduction of points. If they're going to be above that, you wow. think about improving points. And there's still negative four for an interception, and there's negative two on top of that if it's a pick, pick six. six yep. So I think the tweet that Scott made was uh, Winston was QB six last year, and he would drop to QB 23. Sorry, Ryan made that. Matt uh, Ryan is bad tweet. too. But from six to 23 for someone like Winston. Uh, yeah, dude, that's so, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. So if they average less than point six seven accuracy, then they're losing you points. Yep. Um. So I, I mean, other than that, we'll see. It's still in terms of I mean, we're talking quarterback. So Lamar and Mahomes still have a huge advantage. Breeze is probably going to be the biggest safety net for people. He's probably going to be my target if Breeze I can Brady, get him at the back of the second, count- assuming that I'm first. That, that was what my requested spot. Um, Russell Wilson is somebody that's a, a big person there. I also think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a little bit more of a boost than you would expect. And you just said Matt Ryan. I agree with him too. After those guys, and I'm, I'm actually not even including Watson. I'm not including Kyler. Um, but after those guys, I, I think there's going to be quite a bit of a drop off, especially when you start thinking about interceptions and uh, the incompletions. Yeah. Wow. I think, yeah, you're gonna see a huge run on those like top end quarterbacks, and I and, and I think this will be the first year that I'll actually agree with it. Uh, I've always been kind of like you, like I waited until like round maybe four or five, sometimes to even grab my first quarterback in in years past because there was just always guys like it didn't really matter, and like there was so much value that dropped. But with all those extra points, you know, possibly being deducted from your from your quarterback position, you can really get hosed. Um, cause like, yeah. I still think in, at the end of the day, and, and maybe Gary, you can tell me if you agree or disagree, you pretty much are not going to win if you don't have two quarterbacks that can score you good points. Um, I think that the, maybe not this year, but it's how you define good quarterbacks that are scoring points and who, where you're getting them. Because I mean, you still have value-based drafting going into effect. And if you are taking, so let's just say with Lamar and Mahomes, like they're in a tier, but then like Kyler, Dak, or Watson, Dak's kind of in his own tier. Those guys, like, who are you sacrificing over that? And even when I talk about getting Breeze potentially in like the second or early third, I just looked at a mock today where they were going in the fourth. And, you know, that's all of a sudden where you're not passing on top tier value. I will say, there's, so there's a first down, there's a first down point five for first downs, I believe wide receivers and then tight end have the, still the same premium, an extra 0.5 per catch, an extra 0.5 per first down. For me, I'm still probably going to hit home running back as hard as I can and still then try and find some quarterbacks in the middle rounds. Uh, I, I have a growing thing for Minshew, actually. Uh, I think that Gardner Minshew, I just saw a stat today that he was over 60% completion, so that. Yeah, that bodes well close to the 67 really mark. Helps him. They got he got Chenault. Um, he has another year with Chark. GD Westbrook's still there, and then you know Fournette has still been doing his thing. And as much as I want to scoff, and we all want to scoff at it, like Tyler Eifert's there. Dude's relatively good red zone, or at least he has that one year. Or so it makes us think <laughs> he is. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally buying on that, but yeah, it doesn't hurt, I guess. Yeah. Um. So. 
I mean, so, I mean, you, you kind of got into your strategy there a little bit. I mean, so are you, so you're just more like value-based drafting. You're not going in thinking, I got to get quarterbacks early, I, you know, at this point. It, you know, if, if the good top-end ones, you know, are there for me to pick in the first, second round, you know, is that going to be like you got to take them or are you just going to? So it all depends on draft spot. That's going to be a big thing for me just because – so. 100% I, I draft tier based drafting. I think everybody should. That's the easiest way to not hate your draft at the end of it. Because if you miss out on one guy, then all of a sudden you're screwed. So you need to have a tier of players. Um, I, I'm going to sound like such a geek. I have like a notes app where I constantly am just updating players I want. And I, I did it last year. I mean, I only did it last year because I wasn't in Fishbowl before. But I, I just keep them going and delete players off of there. But as I'm seeing stuff on Twitter, because there's just constant information, players that I find myself gravitating towards. So Chris Carson is one that I'm doing all these F FC eliminator drafts. I I just I, – Carson is such a good value. If I had to plant my flag on someone this year, it's going to be Kenny Galladay. I want to try and have a draft slot where I don't feel like I'm reaching and I don't feel like I'm going to – if I am reaching and saying, no, it's too early, am I really going to get him in the next round? Because that's a guy that I absolutely love this year. Um, so really it just comes down to what you feel comfortable with in terms of your tiers. I will say, as much as I want to take Breeze, he would be my number one quarterback to target this year, just due to cost. If I have to spend higher than 301 on him, I'm probably not taking him. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So with with these changes from this year towards last year where where you won it all I mean is that are any of these changes really affecting much of your draft strategy or are you just kind of leaving them where um it is? the the difference in my draft strategy the the 50 point bonus uh, sorry the 5 point bonus for 50 yards rushing 50 yards receiving makes me feel like I can take a Derrick Henry to Nick Chubb much more securely than I could last time where because if you got 50 yards receiving all of a sudden not only did you get that you got an extra five yards or five points and so all of a sudden that's 10 points you know um, makes me feel more comfortable about some of the running backs that are going to go later um, on the flip side just with regard to position I really like a ton of tight ends way more than I did last year I happened to wait just thinking there might be some guys I could get this year, I actually just really like a lot of tight ends. It's weird that my strategy main difference will probably be I will go heavier on quarterback in the in a couple rounds because I really like the wide receiver depth. You know, the Slayton, mm -hmm. Deontay Johnson, kind of that range of your draft, those guys feel so much more secure as wide receiver twos and threes than at the same time last year. Like, I took – uh, Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey last year. I think I took them back to back, being like, Pretty "This sure is awesome. I love Carson Wentz. Wentz. I love this offense." Realize like that wasn't going to happen. But then now we have this crop of young guys who have just seemed to really take off in the last two years with the wide receiver cores. Um, that I know I, I, I feel good about that. So I don't know if I answered your question or not. Like I said, yeah, no, a little no, you drunk did, than you usual. Did, totally did. No, so so you're going to go heavier on quarterback or just receiver? Um, or both. I feel like I'm probably going to end up going heavier on wide receiver than I normally would. I will go earlier on quarterback than I normally would. I do have quarterbacks that I'm very excited to take at the back of the draft. I'm debating on whether or not I even want to say these things out loud, but it's not as if anything's a new thought when it comes well, to fantasy football. Before you get to that point, one of okay. our questions was uh, who who is your your favorite and or sleeper player pick for the upcoming or for the updated scoring format. So you don't have to give away your secrets. If you don't want, you can just say it's a, a, a potential favorite pick. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I can just say by position, I, Chris Herndon, I think that as much as I hate Adam Gase, Chris Herndon, he's just going so late in tight ends uh, running back. Like, Zach Moss, for some reason, is just going super late. If you really want to take a shoot for the moon player, Anthony, uh, Antonio Gibson. Uh, wide receivers, I don't know. There's just a bazillion of them. So a lot of the rookies, like a Chanel is somebody that was such a polarizing wide receiver. 
Well, what just happened? Uh, I was, uh, <laughs> no, like, it's, what? it's no, I don't know. Fine. I'm I'm trying to stop the okay. craziness from happening on um, the side here. <laughs> Hoping this works. I will tell you like the number one quarterback guy that I'm really interested in, and this is a total like dark and it's Jeff Driscoll. Interesting. Uh, just the idea that the Broncos have loaded up on their offense, and we don't actually know that Drew Locke is going to be any good. And uh, the other guy what? is Case Keenum, because as great as Baker was and hasn't been at the same time, uh, Case Keenum knows Kevin Stefanski's system. Yeah, That's interesting. Like round twenty-four pick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like yeah. super late. Yeah, I mean, it'd be like dead last. Somebody else is thinking about it, but yeah. Well, they are now. You know, the the forty people that listen to this. They are now about it. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I tag it with Scott Fishbowl X, it'll uh, it might it might blow up a little bit. So who knows? Yep. If anyone can actually get through the audio madness that's happening with this, I mean, I apologize, everybody. Like this is total madness. This worked last night, AJ. Like you can attest, man. Cheers, YouTube. Oh, I'm so you're sorry. Like your all's videos were Cheers. like shrinking and getting bigger the entire time, and I'm trying to keep up, and I just finally gave up. Like you guys are small, and I was just like, you know what? It stopped. <laughs> So I'm good. Well, that's what I was. I'm like typing to him. I'm like, just leave it. Just let but it even go. When I left you it, keep it shrinking like to the same size. Get bigger or smaller. And, like, and then you keep fucking with it. And then I talk, and it's like, boom. I don't know. <laughs> I don't fuck? know. I, I I turned off the what? Tur- you guys saw my video feed go off in the Skype, and it's because I turned off the uh, the virtual cam that shares my OBS screen with you guys, so that you can see me. Because Got otherwise, it. like I have. I, you know, you can't see me. You're just looking at black screens, which is what you're doing right now. So, uh, I tried to make things better for, you know, the caller and AJ, uh, the guest and AJ, but, uh, it's going to have to figure some other things out here. And there you go. I didn't do anything. You guys, this is going to be a small can I, can I ask you guys a couple questions? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, man. Absolutely. Please do. I want to know, uh, with, in terms of sleepers, like who is somebody that you guys would be thinking like i really want to make sure i target this guy i'm ta- happy to take him around earlier in uh in sfbx oh i'm not sure i've really gotten that far yet i'm like i literally got invited in my- <laughs> I, I mean i got invited on monday i mean i he hasn't even had well yet. disregard sfbx like who's somebody just in draft yeah, right now general. In, in, even in redraft uh, i mean i i well first i'll have to uh I appreciate the 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 you guys as far as the ranking thing, but that's all Joe. I don't even <laughs> do rankings. Again, I'm like a complete unknown, just riding his coattails here um, and drinking beer along the way because that's what I do. But uh, yeah, I think uh, for me and and Joe can probably agree with this. Uh, Hayden Hurst to me, and I know he's getting a ton of love yes. out there, but. The situation is great. Um, he's he's fallen into a tight end happy quarterback yeah. with Matt Ryan, and you know this is a guy who's used to throwing to Tony Gonzalez and Austin Hooper last year had an amazing year. So, you know why not? What what's not to like there? Um, I'm sorry, not Tony Gonzalez. I'm thinking of no, no, you're right. right. It is Tony Gonzalez, Austin Hooper. Yeah, okay. For some reason, I was thinking somebody else, and I'm like, oh, man, did I just really make myself look like even more of an idiot? <laughs> um, he just got him on the tail end. Yes. Yeah, that's – that's okay. So what, All right, so I'm, I'm sort of correct there. Um, so one of, Hooper's so, situation so one of the guys that, that was I like, great last year, and yeah. now he's got Hurst. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, fantastic falling it. spot for Hurst, man. Um, so one of the guys that, that I like uh, who – I think it's starting to climb and get a little bit more love as I'm following Twitter. Um, but Michael Gallup, you know, people are all like, oh, see, Lamb, he's going to ruin him. There's obviously Cooper. And uh, you've probably never listened to the show again, but uh, I am an Amari Cooper hater. Uh, I think he's one of the most inconsistent <laughs> players ever. And it's just, I mean, you see it. And, dude, somehow your video just disappeared on my screen. <laughs> What's happening? It does gone. OBS what? just was like, nah, we don't want to look at Gary. Anymore. Mine? No, Gary. Mine or Gary's? Yeah, now it's back. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it was the obscene, the obscene gesture I was giving you for your Amari. Yes. But dude, like, okay, so my thing with Amari, right? Like, he is in Texas, his total, Mind your words. His total points are amazing, and he has, like, weeks of stretches where he's amazing. 
But if you look at his total for the season, he's so inconsistent. Um, in like a best ball league, fine. He's he's probably really good. Um, I think he should go really high because those weeks he just blows up. But he has so many like he's up here or he's down here. He's never in the middle. Never. Like, and I know never is a strong word. Can I give you a counterpoint to that? Sure. I think, and this is just purely my my own narrative, that bringing in C.D. Lamb is one of the best things that will ever happen to Amari Cooper and that he was no longer the big dog on the block and that they're going to come in and be like, dude, are you seeing what this guy's doing? And he's going to finally push himself to be harder and not just like get shut down by corners and he is going to try on every single play and I think he's going to be more consistent. I think he's going to be boom and boom. Like, I, I think he's going to be really awesome. He's going to have to prove it to me. Uh, I will never draft totally. him. And I definitely I will never draft him where he's going. Um, yeah. But, you know, a lot of people yeah. are, are, are boosting Lamb up, and I'm not sure – I'm not buying into that either. But in turn, like, Gallup's being forgotten. Um, yeah. But I've noticed some people tweeting, like, hey, Gallup's doing – Gallup had, what, 130 targets last year? With Gallup and Cobb on the field. Cobb's gone. Yeah, CeeDee Lamb comes in, but are we really expecting Lamb to get exactly what Cobb got? I'm not. Um, and he missed, well, what, two games? 130 targets in 14 games. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm I mean, all the, in on yeah, Gallup. Num- I can get him. But I think everybody that I'm drafting with right now knows that, so I, I'm never going to get him where <laughs> I had to reach for him. Well, that I, and that was the question. But, but, Are you but I'm fine with re- reaching reach it, around think... earlier than everybody else? I feel like. Yeah. This was all just a ploy to get you guys to say reach around. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm very curious to see what Michael Gallup goes at in August because I think that a lot of the May June drafts are going to be either dynasty drafts or they're going to be kind of shark type things where people are paying for like big money. And it's not until you start getting to more home type leagues where that's the back end of July, most likely August. And I come, I think come August, I think Gallup is going to fall back down. I think that people are going to see lamb and they're just going to automatically assume he's going to be the three. I think you're, you're right on though, that Gallup Gallup will have a heck of a lot more value. How high do you have Dak if that's your view on Gallup? Yeah. I mean, I've moved Dak up to three. Um, okay. He yeah. he jumped he jumped Watson obviously especially after Hopkins got traded. Um, so yeah, that wasn't hard. And then, and then when they and then when they did draft Lamb, like that helps. So Dak Dak went up pretty high for me. Yeah, I mean you look at you look at uh, Blake Jarwin's been getting a lot of talk too. I, I'm not necessarily buying into it yet, but you look at you know. How many targets went to him and Witten in general? And Witten obviously saw, you know, two thirds of of those. So he's no longer there. So there's going to be an uptick there. He may end up getting maybe closer to that two thirds. Um, and then you've got C.D. Lamb jumping in to get maybe the the remainder of those minus or plus some of the yeah. uh, the subtraction from Gallup and Cooper. Um, but you know another guy that that I that I like this year. I mean Calvin Ridley. I feel like it's an easy yeah, choice, him, <laughs> but I really like DK Metcalf this year. Oh my I God, think I, I think he's you know he really started to come on towards the end of last season, especially in the playoffs against the Eagles, which crushed me. But I, I mean the guy's a baller and. You know, he, he's only going to get better. You know, everything that I've seen as far as they want to they want to use his ability and strengths and, and kind of, you know, tear their offense a little bit more and, and find new ways to get him yeah. involved. Everything I see on that's just like, OK, cool. You know, this yep. this makes sense. The guy's what, 22, 23 years old. So he's got a, a, a long future ahead. And as long as Russ is there. I think that's going to be a great relationship. I love Lockett, but I kind of soured on him after last year. He, you know, he, he had some down games. He was dealing with some injuries, ticky tack yeah. stuff. But 
you know, he's better as a two. Yeah, I, I think he is. I, I just don't. I don't think he was ready to be the one. You know that that Doug Baldwin was. So I I have two wide receivers on my list. I told you guys I have a list of players for SFB, and when I'm on a, I have Kenny Galladay and I have DK, and I was just on a pod uh, last week. And we were talking about top 10 wide receivers. And I said to them, I was like, I had DK up in here until two minutes before I walked in to do this podcast because I felt like people are going to think I'm just trying to be hot take. I think that DK is going to put up 2019 Kenny Galladay numbers. Colleen Galladay had like his 14 touchdowns, I think it was, or 12 touchdowns. Like that's what DK does. And I, I'm one of the few that like, I hate the Seahawks just out of pure hatred, (laughs) but I respect the shit out of Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. And like I said, Chris Carson, I have a weird, I guess, hate crush on them. My thing is without somebody backing up Carson and Carson potentially with his injuries, we don't know what's going to happen. I think they are going to finally let Russell throw a little more. And dude, if they let him throw just even like Five ten percent more. DK is going to crush. He was so good. He was my biggest concern whenever we're playing against them as a Niners fan. Was yeah. what are Russell and DK going to do last year? So I'm all aboard that. I he, love it. I love. He's it. got he's got a ton of talent, and yep. it's barely even that that surface has barely been scratched. And, and like I said, I think that they're going to try to work as much as they can to to make that more visible this year and maybe not even still fully scratch that surface because they want to have something for the future. Uh, that That's how I see him. I got to add a tiny little extra narrative to this. If you haven't seen it, watch DK run the 40 at the combine after he finishes his 40. I think it was actually his second one. He gets on the phone. I think he calls his mom and he is bawling. He's crying because he just did it. He just put this badass 40 time up. And then what happened? He dropped to the second round. I think that is one of those guys that has the chip on his block that wants to show everybody, y'all fucked up. Yeah. I am the true real deal. Don't take that little Marcus Brown guy, like Marquise Brown. Like he's he's tiny. I'm Hollywood, not him. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah. kidding. Yeah, this is massive. No, I, I, uh, I'm not sure I'm buying into the DK Metcalf as much as you two, but uh, I, 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 I agree that he's good. Uh, I just – not sure I'm hyping up as much as you guys are, but uh, I love the Galladay pick. The people with good points can be seen on the screen right now, not the people yeah, that exactly. are just wizard of pausing <laughs> over us. Over, over the over the people that uh, I am and, the OBS. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but we love the Galladay pick, man. We just it, we just bro. snagged him with like the last pick or the, one of the last two picks in the first half of our. Uh, we were me and AJ are sharing a team and a. In a dynasty, con- well, I don't even know to call it dynasty. A contract football league um, that we cool. started last year, uh, this year, and oh, uh, so like mess. two weeks ago was the first half. Hopefully, first half of the draft. <laughs> it's an auction. Um, God damn, better <laughs> be the first half. I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, but it, yeah, we we snacked. We got time. I think it's what like ninety one days, ninety three no, oh days. Gosh, it's such yeah. a pain in the butt the, trying the to. The definition fight. of clusterfuck <laughs> is just <this week. laughs> nobody can give up like a Saturday night. Everybody's like, I'm busy. We're all in quarantine. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> like, what's yeah, stop going and getting haircuts and going to the bar. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know what's going. They're like, well, my my girlfriend may not like it. No kidding, they're not gonna like it. But you have to do it because nobody can do it on a Tuesday. <laughs> Not for five hours. <laughs> so. Enter enter my picture of the Jordan crying meme for anything yeah. that face has ever been posted on top of for yet another meme. That's my response to that guy. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's interesting. We're, we're ranting, an we're ranting break, here, dude. but uh, we, yeah, we, we do got to end this up. It, we're a little over an hour. So yeah, uh, yeah, no problem. Let's close this up. I think we got everything we needed uh, from you, Gary. I'm sure we could talk forever, though, because it's a good conversation. But uh let everybody know where they can uh, find you on Twitter and, and, and um, you know, on Fighting Chance and all this stuff. So, Yeah, so I'm uh, at Gary Haddo one It's G-A-R-Y-H-A-D-D-O-W-1. If you can't find me, just search for SFB9Champ. That'll be me. Just got a mic drop that. Right. Uh, <laughs> I don't really write anymore, but uh, right. I'm, I'm with FightingChanceFantasy.com. Got to tired of the writing now that i'm doing the podcasting stuff so you can find us wednesday nights 8 30 central we live stream 
And that's with Fighting Chance Live podcast. Find us anywhere podcasts are. Uh, we'll be there, you know, the next day, or we're on YouTube and we stream live there. We actually have a show coming up on Saturday just to finish our back half of the uh, running backs. Cool, man. It's awesome talking to you guys. I'm anytime you yeah, ever want. Good. You know, food for the fodder. I'm, yeah, I'm always happy to be here. Fans, and so uh, yeah, hopefully back. we'll get you guys on Fighting Chance Live too. Absolutely, man. You, yeah, that'd be sweet. You, uh, yeah, we're always we're always open to uh, to doing some guest spots. So yeah, let us know. And uh, congrats again on your on your big win last year. And uh, you know, you're still champion until a new one's crowned. So oh yeah, hopefully, yeah. It, hopefully it's me. You know, if I get the invite in this year, I don't know. If I don't, hopefully it's Joe. <laughs> we'll, we'll do everything we can to make sure you get in. Hey, whatever. I, if I don't, I don't. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm I'm a coattail guy, so I'm just happy to be here and uh, you know spreading what little knowledge I have. So, <laughs> oh, good. Cheers. Well, Enjoy cheers, guys. On, All right, guys. And, uh, yeah. We'll talk again have soon. Good night, man. Thank you guys so much. You have a good day. All right, AJ. Thank you. Um, switch over to the other scene. Hopefully, this one. Sticks a little bit better than the other. So far, so good. <laughs> um, I, I guess I don't. I just right. you now can't only see it now. See myself, I'm, uh, so. I'm, yeah, I switched to the other scene. We're not moving around a bunch. I don't know what was going on with the other one. I'm gonna have to figure this stuff out. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be kind of an evolving <laughs> thing. I think um, we've got. Uh, we did hire a podcast producer. So he's going to be working with me to tweak this. The logo up top is going to change. The background is going to change. Maybe the layout will change a little bit. Uh, but we did want to kind of make this a little. Unfortunately, the test did not go very well, as we can see. But, uh, it, I mean, it, it worked enough, I guess. What are you doing? Oh, Scott Fishbowl. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm representing my, my lone year in the league. Okay. All right. Got, I got to have some sort of hat to put on here. I, I'm listening to everything you're saying. Don't, don't no, worry. It's all good. Go ahead. Uh, so go back. Go back to what you're saying. But anyway, oh no, your video just got bigger. I have no idea what's going on. Um, you're like <laughs> you're like a he- you're like half a head. Because I pounded my chest. I guess, it's like, man. Oh, bam! It's got fish oh, you're back. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. Um, but anyway, so hopefully we'll get I these kinks worked out. But uh, just listen to the audio. Don't watch the video this week. <laughs> um, or if you enjoy entertainment, watch the video. Yeah, if you laugh enjoy- a lot. You know, as AJ and also it, listen to the audio. Bad. Um, hey, they're outtakes. Yeah, sure, yeah, man. Outtakes that are going published. Because <laughs> uh, got nothing else. Cool. I'm not redoing it. So, all right, man. Um, that's all I got. So we're going to be starting our position. Not No, we're not doing position previews this, this year. Teams. We are doing division previews well, this divisions, year. So but, we're kind of yeah. going to run through them team by team, position by position in the division so we're going to focus a little bit more on you know more of the players this year because we've got some extra time because you know baseball is not stupid yeah baseball is just not happening so we've got some extra time we got like a whole extra month so we threw into more shows um so yeah we're starting those next week and then after that we'll get into you know some of the like consistency stuff with Bob Long. And I think we're going to have like a mock draft show um, and some stuff like that. So we got a lot of good stuff coming on again, subscribe to us, uh, follow us on whatever you listen to, make sure uh, you, you get, you get notified when, when our stuff drops, because uh, there's a lot of good knowledge coming down the way for the next few months. So, all right, man, absolutely. All I've got, I will play the outro music and we will call it a night. Ready? All right. I can't hear it, so I will just chug my beer. (laughs) Peace, y'all. See ya.